Welcome everybody to our webinar today covering next generation detect and response security. I'm Tom Ruffalo, I'm the president of uh, eSecurity Solutions and also CISA. Bill Monroe will be talking to you from WashGuard, who also was part of the, he was a VP level person at uh, SciGlass, which was acquired by WashGuard. So he's got many, many years experience in both developing and also <clears throat> with customers that have had their solution for multiple years. So he's got a lot of experience and we're gonna leverage that today. And what I wanna to cover today is um, a variety of topics. So I'm gonna cover kind of the, the, uh, the background, if you will, of detect and response solutions and you know why they're necessary, um, how to differentiate, uh, protect from detect and respond, uh, specifically, what are the detect and respond alternatives? Uh, which detect and respond solution you should own and why? And then Bill is going to talk about uh, the WatchGuard new solution for NDR, which is an affordable 24 by 7 NDR solution. And he's going to be giving you an in depth view of, of the uh, product, what it can do, how it works, and uh, also give you uh, his own perspective on this. So between the two of us, I think we'll cover. A lot of ground today, and it should be uh, very interesting for for people who haven't been living and breathing this area. What I want to discuss this morning is is a bunch of preliminary uh, points related to uh, detect and respond. Because before you can really look at NDR, you really need to look at the whole topic. And so we want to educate people on the evolving threat solution landscape. Clearly define define what protect, detect, and respond is. Um, we want to define uh, we want to define how it all fits together within your security infrastructure, and we want to introduce you to this new affordable solution that is one solution in the in, in the tech and respond uh, solution area, and show you how it works, what it does, and so Bill's going to cover all the how it works and what it does. And I'm going to focus on the preliminary introduction. So. Uh, if you look at detect and respond, the first thing you really need to look at is, so why is detect and respond even an issue and why is it important? Um, if you look at security regulations and compliance, um, NIST and, and almost every other um, regulation have defined the process of identify, identify protect, detect, respond, and recover as, as categories of security that need to be addressed. Um, the identify is kind of equivalent to the assess, you know, to assess, do risk assessments and, and assess your risk and define your gaps. Those are all very important components. Um, the major categories other than assessment is protect and then detect, respond and recover is a new area that's, that's really been more focused on over the last five plus years. If you're serious about regulations and compliance and you're a large company, it may be something that you've been doing for longer than that. Um, now, stronger security should be the number one reason why adding detect and response solutions uh, is what you want to do. Uh, that, I mean, you can, a lot of people are forced into doing things because of regulation compliance or cyber insurance or something, but stronger security should be all of our goals. And, um, and companies that are serious about security know they need to be focused on balanced approach to security, uh, regulations require detect and respond because it is important, not because it's just the, an interesting thing to do, um, because it's really important to security. And you know, if you look at breaches as a whole, the uh, attacks are typically in networks for months. Everybody's read that, not, you know, not minutes, but days and months and longer sometimes, uh, because sometimes because the attack takes longer, sometimes because they can stay inside and, and harvest more data and do more damage. So either way, um, we know prevention doesn't work by itself. Uh, you have to have the tech and respond to respond to that. Um, appropriate security plan should include um, assessing your top security gaps and to define a balanced approach, which includes assessments to define your gaps and prioritize them, and then also protect and detect solutions to uh, to detect basically and respond, um, detect, detect and respond. And then lastly, 
your ability to to respond to them with your team and your tools is super important as well. So you have to also have a security roadmap as a guide uh, to provide a prioritized approach to how you're going to add security solutions over time. Uh, first thing I'd like to do is start with a poll question. Um, and hopefully Rebecca can queue that up. So the question we'd like to ask is, uh, what did or would drive you to your company to add new detect and re response security? What did or would, right? So if you're already involved in it, what is it driving it? Pick all that you pick all the choices that make sense for you. Um, so I think it's important for people to look at and for us to look at where you all are in your journey. So uh, those are the questions you need to select your answers and push the send button. And there we go. We're seeing more regulations, which is what I would expect. Um, and, you know, cyber search is also interesting. Uh, but those are all really important. Uh, so then we're going to move to the next discussion point, which is what are the differences between protect, detect, and respond? Protect security is basically built around the concept of blocking or preventing. And that is the historic approach to security. Um, and it works fine until cyber criminals would regularly find ways to circumvent your, your prevent. If you're, if you only have protection security and they get past it, then, then these threats and attacks can live in your network for a long, long period. Um, or they can just get past it and do the, and, and sort of remain in your system and unabated, un, un, you know, without any kind of ability to stop them. So that's, you have to have a balanced approach. The text and respond is, is, is in most ways, it's supposed to be monitoring your security and your infrastructure or your assets to detect indications of attack or um, indications of compromise. Now, ideally, detection security would monitor all your users, all your security, your key infrastructure. So it, to get the big picture, right? And, you, and I think it's really obvious why you'd want the big picture and not a smaller picture. Uh, if you can monitor everything and you can do something useful with it and correlate that and analyze it, then you can really provide a very smart, uh, the smartest potential conclusion that you can, assuming you get good data. Um, once threats are detected, in an automated, in as automated way as possible, we want we want to block them and stop them from propagating once we see them, and then we need to analyze the attack chain and figure out what longer term conclusions we can draw from that. What are our actions in the short term and long term, and how do we adjust our security to prevent future attacks? Um, if we look at the the different detect and response solutions in the marketplace. These are the ones that we're mostly familiar with and are the primary ones that are out there. Um, so SIMs are, are designed to monitor all key assets, including security controls, key IT like servers and networks, and user behavior. These are very important components. Not everybody understands how these things are different. So I think it's important just to kind of point that out. Um, SIMs provide a complete picture of attacks by correlating all that data into using rules and AI based threat detection model to then determine uh, what attacks are real and which ones aren't. And also then it helps you quickly determine, you know, what you need to do to block them and stop them and, and potentially do uh, future uh, mitigation. Uh, the cons of SIMs have typically been they're either too expensive or too complicated. Um, but I'm here to tell you that there are affordable managed SIM solutions available in the marketplace. So it doesn't need to be put into some separate category that you can never access. Um, most companies have found that you can't manage them, them yourself because this is too complicated. So, you know, we're here to help. We have a management solution that can do that. Uh, EDR is the one that most people are familiar with and, and, and actually have purchased. Um, it does focus on endpoint only, and it is AI, it leverages AI. So it's a very good tool at the endpoint. The cons are it really only does focus on the endpoint. So thinking that that is the be all and end all, or that that's the entire solution you need, is really a bad 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 conclusion. Um, Network detection and respond or NDR 
is what Bill's going to talk about and network detect and respond. Bill's in need that is looking at for anomalous behavior on your network um, to detect evasive attacks. And if you think about it, it's looking east, west, north, south. So inside and outside your network and also within your network to, to, to look for anomalous behavior. And studies show using AI that anomalous behavior can, can actually point to uh, attacks that are in place, whereas a normal traffic is, is an indication of something that isn't uh, where you don't have attacks. Um, so it's a great way to detect complex attacks and things that aren't attack, uh, detectable in other ways. The only real con for that network for NDR is that it only looks at the network. So again, it's like a lot of security. It does what it does. It's an important component, but no one solution, any area, any area provides everything you need. Um, cloud monitoring is more about monitoring your public private cloud servers. Um, it can provide a lot of valuable services. It is not a detect and network detection response. It's not a detection response solution holistically. It can be a very localized solution for certain things. And vulnerability scans, I only put it in there because sometimes people point out we're doing vulnerability scans. That's great. But they're, they're doing snapshot uh, uh, scans, looking at certain things that they are defined to look at very specifically, like, like uh, you know, software patches and things like that. And, and certain uh, security holes that it knows about. And it can run them over and over again, but it's still a snapshot at a time, snapshot at a time, and it's very limited in terms of scope. Uh, next poll question. Um, so what type of detection response security does your company use? Um, so pick the ones that you're currently using, um, not ones that you would consider using. I think we already kind of covered that. What I would expect to see, which unfortunately I cannot see, is um, that almost everybody owns EDR. Um, probably almost, probably almost, yeah. So no, almost nobody owns NDR, and SIM would be the one. If you're serious about security, would be the most likely. Um, and again, people have lots of thoughts on SIMs um, and NDR. Well, if you own NDR, then you you you've been you bought some of the solutions that are already on the market, you know they're expensive, and frequently these companies are hard to work with as well. So we will talk about a better way, to, a better approach to that. So last slide on this particular thing is, so what, you know, when you're looking to, when you're trying to determine which detection response solution to own, here's a guideline, right? The, the uh, each, first of all, these solutions are not redundant. So owning all three makes complete sense. They are not redundant. They provide different levels of analysis. It's, you know, it's no different than a firewall and endpoint security or cloud security. They all do something different. Um, they're all providing you with a different set of information. So ideally, you're going to own all three of these. If you're in, we have three different, we've defined three different levels of company. There's the compliance driven at the top. They're obviously focused on re regulations and cyber insurance and, and even customers that are driving them to be compliant. They usually are the most active and aggressive. Those companies will typically, and uh, I would say those companies should own all three of these for sure. And they should try to have a short, very short path to getting there if they don't already. And if it's just price, well then again, we're trying to solve those things. Secondly, the middle category is really strong security focus or best practices. Those companies really should also buy all three, but you could have a short term roadmap to get there. And again, if there's, we, you know, we're here to help if we can, if there's issues that you have, obstacles, if it's price or, or management or whatever, those are things that we can try to solve in an economical way. The bottom category is ones of companies that are more casual about security, don't have any specific goals or objectives other than, you know, we want to feel secure. Um, even those companies should have this on a long-term roadmap and probably will. Um, just like over time, they had to add MFA and firewalls and endpoint, and over time, they're going to have to add cloud security as well. Um, so that's that's you know the the conclusion is it's essential security all three of them are and you should everybody should have a roadmap to get there your time frame will probably depend on how serious you are about security. Um, lastly, I'd like to just kind of do a quick overview of e-security solutions. We're a one-stop security solution provider for and provide all things that customers need in the area of cybersecurity. Um, our first area we provide three areas of, of focus. One of them is GRC services and uh, probably the most problem uh, 
the most noticeable of those would be regulation compliance, security audits, readiness assessments, and certification. Um, best practices, security gaps analysis is another area where for uh, companies that aren't as regulation driven can get a, can get the kind of an equivalent, but a lower intensity, lower cost so solution to, to determine their gaps, help them prioritize them, um, and as well as the corresponding solutions and a security roadmap to get there. Lastly, security assessments and testing, basically security testing, uh, penetration tests like and things like that is available, you know, broadly speaking, internally, externally. Um, secondly, we sell security products to, you know, for all the leading security vendors, WatchGuard is one of our is one of our favorites because they provide enterprise level solutions, but they're more affordable and they are progressively increasingly expanding their product line. Um, and so that we provide those and we provide them in a very cost effective way. The last one would be um, detection um, managed MDR or managed security. There's a broad set of managed security solutions, including managed SIM that we provide They're 24 by 7. Um, and we provide these solutions to help cus our customers achieve their goals of regulations or best practices or just sleeping at night and, and knowing what they should be doing and what the roadmap should look like. Uh, Bill's going to talk about his uh, what they're announcing, which is um, which is a new new solution based on an acquisition that they made almost a year ago, um, and it's a company that's been in this market for quite some time. Yeah, well, it's coming up there, and thanks, Tom. Okay. Um, I can actually give you a little color on that background. So. Um, Hey everyone, I'm Bill Monroe. I was the uh, one of the founders of Cyglass, whose underlying technology this uh, WatchGuard product is based on. They acquired us in September of last year. And one of the things that made uh, Cyglass different in the market, which we're going to talk about, is from the onset of building this product, it was about building an AI engine that was really world class right one of the very best and i'm going to talk to you exactly what that ai engine is in my slides where i want to start is to, to and i want to really be able to show the value of ndr and why it's so critical in the defense world that we live in in the cyber defense world we live in today uh, and look at two different attacks one you may be familiar with the other one i'm sure you're not it's they're they're both from um a year or two years ago circle ci was a fairly uh, uh highly uh talked about attack and, and one of the reasons was because unlike most attacks we got a full understanding of what that attack investigation looked like post attack they were very good at sharing it so that pe people could learn from it back in december of 2022 an engineer's laptop was compromised it was an in-memory attack the endpoint technology they had on the laptop was not uh, strong enough to actually detect it and they got in and they got in and they did some impersonation of uh, session cookies and were able to get into the back end systems and and propagate the attack. Um, now, this attack wasn't against Circle CI. This was against Circle CI's more than 1,700 customers. And in January, what we would call a supply chain attack, hit the weak link, go to the harder security. And in January, uh, so about four weeks, three weeks later, uh, one of the partners, one of the customers detected the attack in their GitHub, envir GitHub environment and went back, traced it back into CircleCI and let them know about it. What was interesting about this attack and what the takeaway is, is that it comes through an endpoint. The endpoint was not able to detect and stop the attack. The attacker then spent three and a half weeks or so in the CircleCI environment and CircleCI had no idea that attack was in there. And it wasn't until a customer who had was watching their network noticed the attack unfolding as it came in their back end from their integration on the uh, the back end product development side of Circle CI's products. Note takeaway, right? If they were watching their network, they would have noticed within a day or two at most that this laptop's engineer was suddenly accessing environments and creating tokens and keys for things it should never have, and the attack would have been detected. The second is attack that happened last year, about this time last year, uh, and it is a healthcare data collaboration within the Canadian healthcare environment called Born. In this case, they were uh, they were hit by Move IT, 
which was uh, a very well publicized attack on Progress Software's Move IT environment. Uh, so they had no way to defend it. This was a vulnerability attack. It came in through their network. Endpoints and firewalls were not going to pick this up because it was tr trusted uh, information and trusted communications. It went into their backend system. It was able to compromise a lot of PII data, millions of users of PII data, and before they were able to detect it and shut it down. And what made this one particularly nasty was that Move IT in its normal operating environment has a very secure file transfer system. So the bad guys, once they owned the Move IT environment within Born, were able to use an exfiltration that was actually uh, uh, built for good, the good guys. Uh, again, here's a case where a vulnerability penetrates into a network. And because Born wasn't watching their network environment, they weren't able to pick up this attack as it caused Move IT to do a whole lot of things it usually doesn't do then access data and suck data into it in a way that it never does, it would have been very quick to pick up, but they weren't watching the network. And that's the point, right? You talk about, you know, Tom talked about EDR, talked about NDR, talked about cloud. Really, you need to be watching all three systems to be able to protect your environment. If you're watching one or two, there's still a big gap. It's really going to be all three. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time here simply because everyone knows this, right? The network is really impossible to fully understand what devices are operating on it, what IoT devices. The cyber attacks are getting very good at getting through perimeter defenses. Just read the papers. It's every day now. And you all struggle with one really hard problem that there's no short-term fix, and that is there's not enough trained people out there to make these uh, these technologies do the job they're supposed to do. What you should be looking for in working with Tom and eSecurity is technology that Tom brings to you that does that allows you to do more with less and supports those operations. And that's why Tom mentioned WatchGuard. We're all about bringing that enterprise class security down in a more simplified, affordable way so that it's operationally effective for companies of all sizes. And I'm going to give you one more view of defense in depth and why it's so critical and the layers that Tom was talking about uh, in looking at it in a little different way. And so as Tom introduced network detection and response, it's north, south, east, west monitoring, but it does another thing that's really interesting because it's monitoring everything going on inside and in and out of the network. It also picks up all the devices that are on the network. And so that's another really important use case. It can pick up devices on the network. It can allow you to identify and tag them, and it will alert you when devices change or new devices show up. And it's gonna monitor, not just for the attack parameters, which we'll talk about, but also the device changes. And if you look at the diagram on the right, you can see, you know, endpoint has a job to do, and firewalls have a job to do. But if you look down at the bottom, network defense, network detection and response has a really interesting crossover. It not only can pick up those vulnerability attacks operating in the network or those code injections that can bypass endpoint or a device that you didn't know about that gets exploited. It also is a backup for account compromises and endpoint compromises because those attacks are going to have to utilize your network to expand. And in that utilization, they're going to look very noisy. It's why AI works so well here. And they can't hide in the network. If you have visibility into what's going on there, they're going to have to be moving laterally, doing command and control, moving data to where they can exfiltrate it, implementing ransomware uh, executables to lock systems up, and all of that stuff is anomalous. That's why NDR is such a critical part of the triad of EDR, NDR, and SIM. And I'm not going to go into cloud too, in too much detail here. Actually, I'm not going to at all. But... You watch what WatchGuard launches this fall, and you're going to see this NDR capability expand into cloud platforms. Um, we've already got it running. It was already in SciGlass, and uh, we're going to have the betas starting probably in the, in the late September timeframe. So another really great offer here is when you get in with this solution early on, it's going to very quickly expand as an add-on to cover your cloud environments which really is going to be critical to all those pieces. So what is this solution? Well, first of all, this is a cloud native 
NDR tool. You may be familiar with products like Extra Hop and Dark Trace. Those are more of the legacy type of NDR tools where they're going to deploy hardware in each of the physical locations that you've got to monitor the network traffic, and they're going to deploy a completely different system to monitor that cloud environment. This is different because it operates out of the WatchGuard cloud. It deploys no new hardware. Instead, what we're going to do is tap the existing routers and switches and the existing firewalls, not just Firebox, but any firewall you have, and pull data up into that cloud and do that same NDR monitoring that the dark traces and the extra hops do. Uh, I will argue that the advanced AI engine within this environment, and I'm going to dig into a little bit, is, is the best out there right now. It was um, built out of an amazing project within DARPA. I'll talk about it. But then we rebuilt it just two years ago, launched it just two years ago, really retargeting the techniques that attackers use in the network. Because we talked about the coverage of North, South, East, and West and the devices, that gives you an expansive risk visibility that you don't get from just firewalls, just device monitoring tools, because it actually brings it all together in a unified view. And so you're going to be able to see traffic that's anomalous, how it's moving, what devices are involved, and why it's an alert that you need to take action on. The threat detection engine uses the AI at multiple layers, I'll show that, mixed with a policy engine. One of the reasons I love putting a policy engine in with an AI environment is because AI is really good at telling you what's different, but it doesn't know your environment in the sense of your business operations, when a pen test is occurring, um, when a new partner gets signed up and there's going to be backend traffic going on. Adding a policy engine allows you to tell the AI engine, what's good and what's bad. And it allows you to tell the AI engine things like, hey, Move IT will do these six things. Look for them. And the AI engine will. And when it comes back, it'll say, we see three of the six. That calculates a risk for Move IT. Take a look at this. And then finally, in the poll, people talked about compliance as the guideline. This is a continuous compliance tool. And I'll show you why and how that is. But it has really powerful reporting built right into it that's going to minimize costs around compliance and really help you step up that entire game. What's the product look like? So from a very high level, if you look in the center, you can see the WatchGuard cloud. Many of you may know the ThreatSync product from WatchGuard. It's a correlation and remediation product. We've built the AI engine, we're gonna call it ThreatSync Plus, into that WatchGuard cloud. And then you can see in this case, NDR means we're pulling the data from the left. Firebox traffic logs, third-party NetFlow syslogs, DHCP, NetFlow syslog and DHCP from routers via collector agents that we deployed. All of that, along with if you're using EPDR, goes into that ThreatSync environment. The NDR traffic runs through that advanced AI engine. ThreatSync then correlates all of the results along with Endpoint. And then you look in the back at the alerts you have to deal with, be able to do the investigations and visualizations you need, put the remediation and playbook and workflows in, and then also get a series of very powerful reports that give you visibility into what's happening and what you need to do to fix it, but also how your program is improving over time. So let's talk about the AI. For all you AI geeks out there, uh, I love this stuff. And I can tell you that there is, there is no chat GPT type technology in this stack. What this stack is about is unsupervised and semi-supervised machine learning that live within a neural network. So what does that mean? That means that we have a bunch of unsupervised models, models that learn by themselves. They learn based on setting baselines for what's happening within your organization and looking for anomalies. And when I mean setting baselines, I mean setting baselines to the extent of for every device operating on your network, for every second of every day, there is a normal operating parameter for that device in what it's doing and how it's doing it and where it's sending that data. And that is all collected within that network data 
so that for every single device, every single user, every single data flow, every single firewall, the AI models base what's normal and what it's watching for is what's different. Then we layer in semi-supervised. Semi-supervised meaning we can teach it some parameters to help it move along. And these are the parameters around techniques you wanted to look for, around device events you wanted to look for, around threat intelligence you wanted to look for. And then as you can see from the diagram, all of that reconnects and learns over time from itself and from the inputs of the users in the environment. This self-learning model can also be taught by the IT team. So if Tom is managing this for you, his team is going to watch what's happening and the product is gonna ask questions. I see an anomaly, give me feedback on it. Is this an alert? Is this normal operation? Are you doing something like a pen test for a period of time? And we need to shut it off for a period or dull it out for a period and let us know when that time period is. And so it will also self-learn. If you deploy it and operate it yourself, you will be asked to do that. It's a very simple UI. The questions are asked and you give it feedback. The system gets smarter over time. There are 65 base models that are looking for things like ransomware attacks, vulnerabilities, lateral movement, things like that. Um, and then there are a series of policies that overlay it. There's actually hundreds we build in the product and I'll let you, I'll talk about that. If you look over on the right, you can see the results. These are results from a side glass customer that's been running the product for two years. They have 5,000 internal IPs that we're collecting data from. That represents 40 million flows of data over a week of time operating in that network. When you go through and you do feature engineering, identify the devices, put in the machine learning events and figure out what's normal and what's anomalous, it's about 1.3 million events. When you correlate those events with behaviors around different types of intelligence and the semi-supervised, it's about 365, seven behaviors. And then when you lay in the policies and the specific good and bad things that we're looking for, it's 35 alerts in a week or about five alerts in a day. That's the secret of the AI. Network traffic, as all of you probably are very aware, is voluminous, it's huge. And a policy engine alone or a human being alone, dumping it into a SIM alone, is too much data to be useful, too many false positives, and you're overwhelmed. But you layer in an AI engine like this one, and it's going to go through that data and it's going to tell you what's a problem, risk prioritize it, and tell you exactly what you need to fix it. There's over 70 Sideglass customers using this product today. Come fall, they are all porting over to the WatchGuard product. So the other piece of this is this AI stack is proven. It's out there, it's working, it's been operating. We rebuilt it about two years ago and brought it into market. It's been very successful. And the last fun piece of trivia on this slide, the original AI engine that this is all built on was built by DARPA in the US DOD. What it was specifically built for by DARPA was to, and it was during the Afghan war, was to look at strike packages and communication systems and navigation systems and their degradation in weather environments. So a whole boatload of weather environments, a whole boatload of you know, material data around systems, communications, et cetera, brought in the AI engine, and then you'd throw in the weather for the day and the commanding officer would get a, an output that would say, use this strike package with this nav type, with this communications to do the strike. Why it was perfect for network is it's huge amounts of data targeting down to a very few, very important things that the intelligence needs to push out the bottom end to make decisions. DARPA saw, the, the DARPA team saw that it was an immediate fit for the network. They worked with InQtel and our parent company, uh, the original founders of Cyglass to bring this out to market. And so that's where the AI comes from. It's pretty cool AI. What does it do? Well, it gives you visibility into all of those devices on your network. That means you can identify them. In our system, you can actually tag them, score them on how important they are. You can use that to monitor a zero trust environment. You can use that to be alerted to when there's a blind spot area, there's rogue devices popping up, there's IoT you didn't know about. When you run a pilot of this tool, almost every customer finds things and goes, oh, wow, I didn't know about that. Wow, thank you for finding it. Because, and, and the number one thing, 
physical security cameras showing up on the environment that have IP addresses. Threat detection, the traditional network detection and response threat detection, specifically looking for the steps that occur and unfold in a network as an attack moves. Now, it doesn't matter if it's vulnerability or if it's ransomware or it's supply chain, whatever that attack is or data theft, whatever that attack is they're trying to do, they're going to have to recon your system. They're going to have to access things that don't usually get access. They're gonna have to make command and control. They're gonna have to do lateral movement. And if they're stealing data, they're gonna have to stage it to a location and exfiltrate it. The AI models look specifically for these things. And when they see them, they alert you to it. When they see two or three of them, they alert you to it with a lot of bright exclamation points and a big risk score to get you moving. On the compliance side, because we built the policy engine to work with the AI, it allows us to actually build in network and cloud policy environments. So we built in the NIST 853, the ISO 27001, and the UK Cyber Essential Controls. There's well over 100 controls in there, and they're already built. You just turn them on and they start working. What does that mean? It means that it helps you step up your own compliance game to being certified in these different areas. But if you have third-party compliance requirements and regulatory requirements, almost all of them from GDPR to FFIC to CMMC to DIFARS NIST 171 are built on these core control sets. And we've already built a variety of those into the system. I'm going to talk, tell you about that add-on product in a moment. So it'll really support that in client compliance uh, process because it's continuous, meaning you're not just doing an audit once every three months. These controls, the AI is automatically telling you if they are effective and the reporting is instantaneous. No Excel sheets required here, or you can export these outputs into your mass Excel sheet, cover all your network stuff. Supply chain, because supply chain becomes really critical because when you're part of an ecosystem and you're wanting to, one, not be that company that gets attacked and causes your partner to get attacked like CircleCI, that's a great way to get kicked out of that system and lose revenue. But the opposite is true. When you can show that you've stepped up your security game, you can get into supply chain ecosystems with bigger partners because your competitors will fail because they haven't done their job and you're gonna be less risky, the third party risk people at the large company will be very happy. Let me give you an example. We have a dairy co-op as a customer in Cyglass. Aldi, the big grocery store chain, was uncomfortable with their dairy supplier in the UK because their cybersecurity risk. Aldi showed them their environment with the reports from the, the WatchGuard NDR product. So I, I'm sorry, the, the dairy, the dairy co-op showed them to Aldi and they got the contract and it doubled their business, all because they did cybersecurity. So there's a reason you can actually say your cybersecurity actually helped drive your business. And a lot of that supply chain quality and third-party risk is gonna become more and more prevalent over the next 10 years. So it is a way to go build your reputation in your business industry. Finally, cyber insurance. It's hard to get cyber insurance, renewals are going up, and it's hard to get payouts. Because we've built in cyber insurance reporting, you can actually use it to acquire new cyber insurance, to maintain what you have without costs going up. And most importantly, when stuff goes wrong and attack does come in, you can show that you've met all the cyber insurance requirements for your network and come follow your cloud and that they've got to pay out. And that's paid off for customers already too. Two types of reports that come in the product. First report are risk and threat reports. And I'm gonna give you two examples right here. The one on the left is a network threat report. This is an overall view of your network risk and all of the controls that are operating your network to secure it. And so what you can see is you get an overall score, you get a summary of your top detection, you get a summary of each individual area like visibility, policy assurance. It even goes down, this control goes another three pages into each control. Why is this report important? Well, because if you have the goal of setting an A and you have no, for your, for your cybersecurity program, you have no way to show that, and you started a C, you can use these reports to show management. Look, we started a C, we're moving ourselves up to an A, having really solid control and security and hygiene around that network gives you a way to show the hard work you're doing. It also allows you to meet SLA metrics. It also 
works to let you know where the risks are, what's happening, and what the trend lines are, and what to do about it. The one on the right is a ransomware report. This comes out of the box also. We took the top CISA 56 controls for the network and 15 control objectives for ransomware defense. They're all built in the product. The report just comes out once you turn it on. And this is a way to go through and make sure that you have hardened your environment to any sort of ransomware attack. And if there are poor scores, how to remediate each of them. So really simple to use, powerful reporting. It's going to take your cybersecurity hygiene up to the next level. The other product I want to show you real quick is also coming out this June, right? And both these products go live June 28th, is WatchGuard Compliance Reporting. And this is going to be the first iteration of WatchGuard Compliance Reporting covering network. And it's going to have in it about 15 different pre-built compliance reports from all from NIST 853, 27,001 ISO, et cetera, that you can then activate and use within your environment. It is an add-on product. There's going to be an additional charge for it. I'm trying to put a special together for the launch, so watch for that because you want to get this uh, because it's a real money saver. It does the same thing, though. It takes that compliance goal you have. It takes each of the controls in your appliance and it maps it to that compliance requirement. You can kind of see that in the numbering for access control on the right slide. Slide, And then it tells you how you're doing. And it gives you control assessments that are automated. Saves time, saves money, helps you move the compliance bar. Network's coming now. Get it while you can, because in the fall, cloud and SaaS get added to it. And then a little secret that I'll tell all of you, come end of year, early next year, EPDR will get added to it. Imagine a single compliance report covering endpoint networking cloud and all the controls. It's going to be a really cool tool, and we're just beginning to launch it right now. So what makes us different? I'm going to roll out, wrap up here pretty quick so we have time for questions. Uh, Tom alluded to this. This product was built from the ground up to go into smaller organizations, smaller IT teams. Our largest Cyglass customer is 38,000 employees. Our smallest is 52. Anything in that window, this product works great. It's easy to deploy. There's no hardware, and its cost of operation is significantly less than any other NDR tool out in the market. Cutting edge AI, I showed you that AI engine. It's as good as any NDR tool out there. I think it's better. Easy button. We also built not just easy deployment, but a lot of automation in this tool. A lot of automation in control environments being pre-built for you. And you just click buttons to turn on and, 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 and configure the ones you want. A lot of automation in threat hunting and threat detection, because I don't think anyone here has their own threat hunters on staff. So we do that work for you. And then finally, bringing in the compliance reporting. No other NDR tool offers that level of reporting and visibility. Those are the things that make this product different. And on top of that, it's amazingly affordable. Like we're talking 40, 50% less than what any NDR tool out there costs. What's this tool about at a high level? It's about taking that complexity of your network, that opaque, busy, I don't know all the devices out there network, and making it visible to you so that you understand what's happening on your network, what's there, and how it's working. It's taking those blind spots in your network that can be hygiene risks, attack risks, and it's giving you visibility to them and the ability to close out those risks and mitigate them quickly and effectively. And you, you know, it's taking those, those scary attacks that we see in the headlines that even you know, the biggest companies are getting whacked. Santander Bank has 600 people in their security operation, 600. And you saw what happened to them in the headlines. It's taking those scary attack vectors and giving you a threat detection and response engine that you can have confidence in that's built on the latest AI that's watching that network where these attacks unfold and giving you a whole nother layer of detection and support for your cyber program. And with that, I'm going to open it up for our last 10, 15 minutes or so to questions, 10 minutes or so. Please pop some questions in and, and let me know what's on your mind about this. Uh, I'd also be really interested to talk about some of the poll questions. One of the poll questions around NDR. Some people have NDR. I'd love to know a little bit about your experience with it. 
and uh, hear a quite and 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 you know where it may be falling short, so I can talk to the difference between this product and what you have. Based on what you've heard, especially today, um, does this affect your desire to own something like an affordable NDA solution? This is not a hard commitment by any means, but the more of an indication of does this does this change your thought process? Um, adding another security solution. Um, that's, you know, and, and so Re 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 Rebecca is telling me the answer is like 67. Yes. Percent. Yes. That's good. Um, and that's what we would hope. Um, I, my point of view on this is that this is super important stuff and it does change. I think the landscape of what we can offer, you know, what we can offer to customers, what, uh, what you consider as an essential component of security. And it, it's a, definitely an evolving um, window of, of, of solutions. Um, over time, this stuff's changed. And, and we have to recognize that, and another area that people haven't adopted very, you know, a lot of solutions for is cloud security. This is one of those areas that, you know, where the solutions are actually more affordable than people think. The, the, the threat landscape has changed significantly, and we have to adopt to that, um, adapt to that. And and this is one of those areas where, where uh, we can do that. And I know WatchGuard is going to have other solutions coming up over time that actually focus also on cloud security. And the goal, and this is WatchGuard's goal, has always been to provide solutions that are affordable, but also uh, enterprise level in, in their security. So. I think we've got that. We can close that off. Um, maybe I think Rebecca was going to read some of the questions that have come in. That Tom, um, so you're going to offer this product in the managed service? It's yeah. So part of the managed service. I'd love to hear yeah, about so, yeah. Right. So the the ways we can work with customers on this, and we will obviously contact you, is that uh, first of all, we can you know we can talk to you more about. It. We get more information. If you want more information, we get it. If you want to see a demo on it, we can give you a demo. Um, if we need to do something else, we should talk about that. Uh, definitely, we will offer it as a product, so you could something that you could buy, or something with the managed service wrapped around it that we can offer on top of that. And then all you really need to do is buy it and not worry about it. We'll deploy it, get you the reports, provide you the alerts, and also do the remediation, or at least the core part of it. So those are your options. Um, it's just it, like everything else that we sell or, and the solution that we provide, it's a flexible, we have a flexible model and we, uh, you know, want to adopt to what the customers need. So do you, what are your questions, Rebecca? Yeah, so the first question was, can NDR restrict access to the network by approved authorized devices? What NDR, so NDR, threat detection and remediation tools are not enforcement tools, right? So a firewall is going to restrict access what NDR can tell you is, did one of the devices that was restricted actually get through, right? It's kind of, think of it as an overwatch detection tool. It's gonna to tell you when the policies and rules you have in place in your firewalls and your access control are not meeting that requirement and, and somebody's bypassed that environment. The next question is, what is the difference between a SIM and NDR? So think of NDR, so NDR is gonna be focused on network, cloud, all those internal pieces. If you have a SIM environment that you're operating, you would want to bring NDR in, bringing network and cloud in, and you would wanna bring endpoint in, and you wanna bring identity in. And the notion of a SIM all along was to create a central unified place to be able to bring all of this threat surface data in to do proper detection and response and make it simple. It didn't quite live up to that in 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 its its full glory, right? And I think XDR is is kind of uh, uh, how to beat up SIM. Um, Tom mentioned something important though. He's got a managed service I'm with you on this. <laughs> yeah, he's got a managed service SIM. And I can tell you that the people I know that love their SIM do it as a managed service. And the yeah. people that bang their heads with the SIM try to run it themselves uh, because you really need pros to run it. But that being said, the SIM is the central point to bring everything. The NDR tool is covering the threat surfaces of cloud and network, where EDR is covering identity, or I'm sorry, endpoint, 
and then an, an identity SASE type tool is covering perimeter and identity. And, and you really want to think about your defense hygiene in those threat surface models. Do I have coverage on these different threat surfaces that attackers will use to get in? And can I unify all that into a single location? If you're a small organization, if you have EDR and you have NDR and cloud covered and you're using two UIs, that's not bad. And a small organization can do that pretty effectively. You get into a larger organization, you know, 500 to up people, you, you probably want to have a SIM to bring that in all together. And as I said, do it as a managed service. So let me add a few things. So first of all, we have a lot of customers that are on SIMs and managed SIMs. And the reason we have sold that to that customers is because it, it basically takes it. The big difference on these is where do they get their data, right? So an NDR solution gets it from the network. So it's limited to what you can see on the network, which is freaking, it's basically amazing stuff, right? It's stuff that you can't get elsewhere, but by itself, it gives you, it has one ability to generate uh, alerts and, and detect threats based on network traffic. And it is really good at doing that. Endpoints are really good at looking at the endpoint with AI and trying to determine what's anomalous and also what is an attack. A SIM is very, is actually, think of it as the, as the mother ship that's taking data from everything, right? So endpoint, your endpoint generates logs that are real time. Your firewalls generate information. Your cloud security can generate information. Your MFA can generate information. Your NDR, right? So it takes all of that data, all of it, real time, correlates it, analyzes it, correlates it, analyzes it, and then applies rules based on this correlated data that comes from all these sources. So it is the big daddy of threat detection. It is the best method you can use. And, you know, like I said, it is misunderstood and that it's been expensive and it's been complex. It is not necessarily expensive and the complexity doesn't have to be there because we can manage it. So do we, that's why I made a big point of during the presentation of saying that you need all three, yeah. right? They're all doing a different thing, um, but every one of them provides something meaningful and amazingly useful. But a SIM is going to be the one that's going to generate the most, both most intelligent information from every source that it can get obtained information. And it also gets information from your servers, from your user behavior. These are things you can't get from other sources. Yeah, no, that's absolutely, absolutely correct. And, and the neat thing that NDR can do is it can, it can take and do a layer of correlation and detection so that you're not sending raw data into the SIM, but you're sending intelligence into the SIM around what's happening across the firewalls and the, the, the network traffic and the routers and switches and everything, the smarter the information going into the SIM is, the smarter the SIM is to find what you're looking for. Yeah. There's another question here. This one says, can we provide thresholds against the baseline to identify what's unusual? So the tool does that automatically for you but you can absolutely configure that to exactly the way you want it to look or to add a specific policy and to look for specific things. For example, one of the policies that we run in the tool is a move IT policy, talking about the Bourne attack. Anything around anomalies that are related to the threat intelligence that we know about how the Bourne IT attack actually unfolds, what TTPs it uses, will pop up and the AI will pick that up. So the answer is yes, but you don't have to build it yourself. It's all built for you. And next, the question is, is this NDR a brand new product or are there any customers out there today? Yeah, I think I mentioned uh, there were 70 customers out there running it under the Cyglass name. And, and when Cyglass or WatchGuard bought Cyglass last September, the goal was to port the entire product over within a year. And then those customers were all coming over to the WatchGuard product. What WatchGuard does to enhance what we had at Cyglass was the WatchGuard Cloud at ThreatSync. Both were superior to what we had as the individual Cyglass product. So we have the network side coming now, cloud side coming in the fall. Then we'll be at parity, and those people will go over. But this is out in the market, 70 customers proven operating, very happy. And then... Another question is, as a company interested in this solution, where can I get some more information? I'll let Tom take that one. 
Yeah, well, you can get it from us. Uh, so, <laughs> so if you don't know who eSecurity Solutions are, we probably know who you are. So we will come and talk to you. Um, and again, what I said a little while ago is true. We're, we will work. We will take you through this process, whatever way makes the most sense for you. We can we can start by increasing your information and knowledge. We can show you a demo of it. Yeah, you know, there's all kinds of things we can do. We can give you pricing, um, and we can give you pricing. You know, if we manage it. So there's a lot of ways for us to take you through it. We'll take you through it at the pace that makes sense for you, and and make sure that. You know, it, it's something that makes sense. Uh, we we have a lot of options and how we can get you from where you are right now to something that you think is you know you're comfortable with and you're ready to make some kind of decision. And I should add to that 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 uh, eSecurity is one of the few partners that at launch is fully certified technically to operate the product, operate it as a managed service, deploy it, support it. So they are they are ready to go and have been a, a deep part of getting this product out to market. Uh, been in the beta test, et cetera. Another question we have is, does our perimeter firewalls count as an NDR or have NDR capabilities? Your perimeter firewalls are primarily enforcement tools. What gets in, what doesn't get in, what gets out, what doesn't get out. It has some antivirus um, threat detection built into it, uh, depending, you know, different capabilities, depending on the vendor. But it is not a unified threat detection tool. Each firewall is operating in its own world with its own policies. What NDR does is it takes all of that firewall data as well as all the internal data and brings that all together to create an ability to see that entire network in a unified picture. You think about how an attack unfolds, a firewall would see one little piece of it, right? And then another firewall might see another little piece of it. And then a router might actually route through three or four pieces of it. And unless you're unifying all three, you won't see that attack unfold. And so that's why NDR is different. It's a broader visibility, a more holistic visibility. Yeah, and um, and this is an indication. This is one of my favorite charts. Of course, I created it, so it's my, one of my favorites. <laughs> this is a chart that kind of shows security, infrastructure, and also even includes IT, right? Your key IT, and these are all important components of your security. Um, and and the thing that a SIM does is it analyzes and takes information from all these things so that it can make intelligent decisions. And you have an operations center of people here, right? NDR is one of the boxes in in this group here. In fact, on one of my charts, I added it. It's it's been you know new from from um, from WatchGuard, so I didn't have it in here yet. But now it it adds. I add that to the group of solutions that provides significant information or significant security for your system. Every one of these does something different. So the question about is, you know, is, is a firewall the same as NDR? No. Is an endpoint the same as NDR? Is anything in here the same as NDR? No. Because NDR firewalls, again, are, are, are preventing and, and controlling traffic between you and, and the outside world. And that's why we used to use, believe those were like the mega solutions for protecting your headquarters. But now that everybody works remotely, we have to have remote firewalls in the cloud in order to solve that problem. But endpoint security is the one thing that lives on every endpoint, and therefore it's the most, probably the most important piece of, of security. Um, but now we can add other things to that, like secure email and Wi-Fi and, and multi-factor authentication These, and cloud security. These are all important. And, ND, and NDR is super important as well. And it needs to be added to this group as a new solution. Um, but it could, when you add it, you still will be able to incorporate that data into a SIM. Right. So they all have a different purpose, every single one of them. And if you look at this graphic, it's very clear why managed service or security and MDR type of services are so powerful, right? Because for the average organization, that is a lot of stuff to manage. I mean, you walk around Black, awesome. Black Hat or RSA and you start to realize, wow, these guys have lots of products and they all sound the same to me. And uh, using a good managed service can go a long way in, in upping your security hygiene um, yeah. and, and reducing the complexity of this slide. But, you know, the other thing I will say, like if, if anybody wants to talk to us about how security is different and what the different components do and why they all make sense, we will gladly take the time to do it. I will get my chief security person on the phone 
or you know on a webinar with you with uh, and we can have that discussion. Uh, our job and the thing that I find most gratifying about what we do is that we work with smaller companies and small to mid-sized companies mostly and we and we don't care how big you are. We care about making sure you have what you need. But if you have threats and you have to be compliant or you need high level security, we can help you do that. You don't have to be the most expert and and you don't have to have the largest staff. We can manage things for you. We can help you identify what you need. We can run a risk assessment to identify your security gaps and help you prioritize that. Any other questions? Rebecca. The last question is, is this solution affordable to smaller companies, which kind of goes into what you're just saying? Yeah, it, it absolutely is. Um, I, I can tell you when I run the, um, when I run the total cost of ownership number, which is the number you should care about, right? Not, not how much it's going to cost to purchase, but how much is it going to cost to purchase and run for three years? Um, when I run the TCO on this versus say a dark trace, we almost every time I do the numbers, we come in 40% less, 50% less. It's significant. And a big part of that is we remove the hardware complexity, you know, shipping hardware, racking and stacking hardware, upgrading hardware, um, not getting another box in the mail saying, oh, ship us back the other one. And then having to have someone go through and actually do that work uh, and the power and the complexity of just managing that hardware. So uh, that alone takes the price down. So yes, this is significantly more affordable. Definitely take a look at it. Like I said, we have customers that are, that are 55, 60 people that operate this thing very successfully and, and it is in budget. Uh, rarely do you need to add new headcount with this product. It's usually the team that run that you have on staff can run it today. Yeah, but the other, the other part of that is too, we, with almost all of our security, there are different components that you could buy that might limit the amount that you have to spend on any one solution. So what, what we always try to do is the best practices is to assess your, where your gaps are and your priorities and, and so that you know what to go after and then figure out what to do, what to purchase to fill those holes. If you spend, you know, 90% uh, of your budget on a firewall and you got 10% left for everything else on that chart, you just made a huge mistake, right? And, and we can help you prevent that by saying, okay, look, we need to buy all these components. How do we find the right solutions with the right, you know, vendor like WashGuard um, to solve those problems at the right price? And maybe instead of buying an entire 100% package of, of NDR, maybe you buy a subset of it, maybe. Right, maybe if you even when we sell SIMs, we have different versions of managed SIM to scale down to meet people's price points. So we are really focused on helping you achieve your goals. You need to leverage us to do that. And then with that, since I guess that was our last question, we will end the event and we're seven minutes over and I apologize. Um, but thanks very much for attending and hopefully you learned something and we'd love to follow up with you and and uh, figure out how to help you going forward, which any of your security needs. But you all take care.